Yo ho ho! What's going on, guys? This is Grim Reaper bringing y'all out one touch. You already know 130 came through with the greatness, and we're here to talk about it. Um, the usual review, we're gonna be having to a bunch of different points. So speculation is low, and as you know, with uh, the schedule that it goes with every single bi-weekly release, stay tuned for the One Punch Man podcast where we're gonna contrast and compare our ideas with a bunch of other individuals, including um uh, Zonin, Sasuke, uh, Matt, Sundown, Steve O, Keishin, all them niggas. Uh, so make sure that you come through. Support the family. Also check out the link in the description below if you want to come through and talk about not only the topic of this video but the chapter in general in the Discord below. And also come through with a Patreon if you want to help out. We're growing, we're doing everything done. Um, so let's get into it. All right. So let's start it off with uh, the transponders and Tatsumaki saving everybody. So in chapter one two seven. 128, especially 128, but in 127, we didn't necessarily know what the course of the battles were going to be with all the other heroes in Tatsumaki's fight. We knew that Tatsumaki's fight was getting to a, a pretty close, like, a pretty close to the climax, not exactly the e climax, but close to the climax, um, and it was going to start to correlate with the rest of the other hero situations. All the other S-Class heroes were having trouble, and Tatsumaki was basically getting the life squeeze out of her with her own barriers force. Now, to see her overcome that instance in 127 with the assistance of King and Saitama or whatever, whatever you want to claim it, um, now leads us to this moment. So, we find out that it's not that she's able to sense individuals or that she's using other instances that, that she has used. Like, for example, whenever she was able to uh, sense uh, cycles out from way down at the bottom of the association, apparently it's just the transponders or the responders. I don't know exactly what the proper name for them is, but... Basically, that's what she's using to, like, I guess, locate exactly every individual hero's location. The flaw of the plan is obviously that if you don't have the transponder on you, then she's not going to be able to get to you. And we see that with two of the heroes in two instances, uh, Flashy Flash and Zombie Man, which we'll elaborate upon in a second. But this does bring up some questions about, like, Tatsumaki's ability to locate individuals and objects. So, for example, if she's, like locating these transponders does it mean that like she's able to like recognize replicas of objects and look for them did she like touch these objects beforehand that's why she's able to sense them are they sending out some type of radio signal that she's able to pick up can she pick up radio signals does that mean that like she doesn't need a transponder to communicate with everybody's radio signals like what is what is the meaning of tatsumaki being able to sense out people's locations through this device so with tatsumaki rescuing all the heroes this is not necessarily rescuing. Let me not put it in that instance, but all right. Let, let's say that we use the word rescuing, right? She rescued all the heroes, and let's talk about the individual instances and what those instances really meant for the outcome of the battle and what could have been. So, Child Emperor is obviously the um, the most troublesome one. Well, arguably the most troublesome troublesome situation. Um, we had a poll question about it. Make sure you guys check out the po uh, two poll questions that we done at the same time. I want to do them consecutively so we can get more questions in throughout the week. But um, evaluating Chad Emperor's situation, he was drowning. And in the monologue that we were seeing um, before his dialogue in his head, he was saying that he was trying a bunch of different things to either get out of his current predicament of drowning or just try to incapacitate even out to water in general and nothing nothing was working so i don't think it's crazy to say that child emperor situation was probably the most perilous at the same time with what he pulled out up against phoenix man before phoenix man and like immediately after that even in this fight in the beginning of this fight i don't think it's crazy to say that like he may have something under his sleeve he was in a pretty crazy situation. He wasn't doing anything. So maybe he couldn't get out of drowning exactly. Maybe he was going to struggle a little bit more. But out of most characters, he has the most things that he pulls out of his ass. That like are contraptions for his backpack. Or he has a plan for these different scenarios. Or he just knows that like he can use these already existing variables. And amplify them or augment them with other air variables that he can introduce. Like fire, ice in this example or whatever. And then just like change the scenario up or make it beneficial for him so i don't necessarily think that child emperor drowning 
was the most perilous situation because he seemed to be the most prepared for the biggest variety of things, if that makes sense. On the surface, I agree. He was drowning. He was the one mentioning that he couldn't do this or that. He's mentioned that he's been restricted before. Half of his dialogue is him describing the perilousness of his current situation. Whether it be up against Phoenix Man in the beginning part of the fight, up against um, G5 when he first showed up. He mentions the troublesome things a lot. So, I don't want to like discredit the fact that he was like drowning and like was saying that he was drowning, but I think he could have done something about it. Pig God versus Gums was a different scenario. Now, I think we've gotten, out of this in the Fear of Fight, we've gotten the least amount of flashes, the least amount of presentation for it. And I could see why. The Fear, not so much because Amai seems to be like a really loved and adored character. Fear of it also has some pretty interesting dialogue. So I don't know why we haven't flashed to that fight as much besides a lack of time. But for Gums versus Pig God, these two characters aren't very likable. Their designs aren't very appealing. And their fighting styles right now aren't interesting at all whatsoever so i can see why this would be on the lower end of things but with the little presentation that we got pig god was seeming to put up a fight sure he got swallowed up sure he got surprised but he fought right back out of it on his own kept his ferocity it didn't necessarily seem that he was at the whim of gums for too long at any particular part of the flashes that we saw but now once again he's back inside of gums's jaw i don't know if i see this as a negative thing is the ability to get your opponent into your mouth considered like a pin or like an advantage or like a, a critical hit or like successfully hitting somebody with a cannon or like knocking them down like it's not conventional fighting it's not even like how they were pushing each other before so i don't know what them eating each other like really means it should be advantageous you would think that like when we first saw it it was being presented that like yeah like oh gums just ate a pig god yeah he's got it but that it hasn't been that way Neither are the asses inside either of them destroying uh, whichever one they try to attempt to eat. And he's able to get out. So I can't say that Pig God being inside of, Gum, inside of Gums' mouth meant that like he was losing. Maybe, maybe I could claim that Gums had the upper hand, sure. But that one's hard to really distinguish what the hell was going on. But it wasn't necessarily the best look to see Pig God inside of Gums' mouth. I'll say that. Uh, as we already declared with the My Mask and Fear Ugly. This, is, this got pretty bad. It, and not even dialogue. The, the picture got pretty bad. Um, we've already taken to making an atomic, uh, not an atomic, uh, an Amai edits uh, a text channel. So we have an atomic edits text channel for Amai Mash just for this chapter. The slander is real. I know the love for Amai is large as well, but just like we've been the refuge, the center, the citadel of atomic praise and slander in the one push man community it seems even even there was apparently there's even an entire reddit page that like is now on the wayside at least in contrast to our uh, our ability to produce atomic samurai hate or um or support so let's let's start it with a my mask too man let's see how many of my edits we can get in all the of my hate all the of my love let's see how even we can get that text channel if you want to support a my if you're really good at editing pix arts all kinds of stuff. The memes that we do, if you can make memes or shit like that, just drop them in there. That's really all it is. Just the mind mask memes. Um, and I will be doing a mind mask video, most likely before the next chapter. Probably the day before we do the predictions. And the predictions will be the day before the chapter is released. But I can only keep that order or that schedule if Murata um, uh, lets us know when the chapter is coming out. Because he didn't do it this week. But hopefully it will happen. I'm assuming that it will come out on Friday again as well. So I'll be doing that prediction video on Thursday. So you'll get the Amai video most likely on next Wednesday. But stay tuned to make sure that uh, if I stay true to that schedule. Um, fear is powerful, quick and fast. Amai is crying. It's humiliating. He not only called for help, but he had his eyes closed. I don't, there's, you can't really get like that much more like embarrassing. I guess stock has dropped tremendously. Amai and Amai stock poll question may be up next because this is This ain't it, bro. This ain't it. I, I did not see this. I did not see this. Um, up next is Homeless Emperor versus Zombie Man. So, Zombie throws out a joke that he should have put his transponder in front of his head. Because as we see, 
his scraps or like or the remains of his clothes is what Tatsumaki is actually like bringing up because that's where the transponder is. So skipping to refer to Flashy and Zombie Man in the same instance because they're basically in the same situation aside from Titanos presence. I think Zombie, well, then neither of them are going to be vulnerable to the assaults. So that leaves out the whole, like, oh, you didn't protect them. There could be a safety issue situation there. Like, it doesn't matter if Zombie Man gets squished, and it doesn't matter, like, what happens to Saitama, he's going to be all right. At the same time, Homo Emperor is there. So I don't think that the ceiling fell on Homo Emperor and Zombie like it did for um, Flashy. So that situation may be different. The results of what they have in the deal with may be different. Maybe the ball will, like, explode or, like, Maybe Tatsumaki's released the ball after she finished lifting it up. I'm not sure exactly what it is, but because she was lifting up Dark Shine. Dark Shine was getting lifted up, so was uh, Child Emperor. Some of the three uh, disciples as well. So it's interesting. It'll be it'll be interesting to see how far or how much more Tatsumaki is willing to protect individuals. We definitely saw the the, the orb around King release. So maybe they, they the rest of them release at the same time as well too. Maybe that's a safe bet to have. But what does that mean for the position of the heroes? Like, what if Dark Shine's still floating upward? Does, he, does that mean that he fell down now? Like, did she actually release it? Regardless of their positioning? Like, I'm wondering. If that's the case, is, is Atomic Sound gonna fall back down? Like, is she still lifting them up to the top of like the place? Does that mean that they're gonna be directly underneath uh, Sairochi? Like, when is Tatsumaki planning to disengage the orbs for the heroes? If she's already disengaged the orbs for the heroes, where are they? What position? Where where are they positioned? Are they in close vicinity to the hero or the monster that they just finished fighting? That's the case. It's pretty dangerous. Just lift them up like that, and then like, you give them a quick little break, quick little save. But like, Atomics, Atomics like departure didn't seem like it was gonna be returning anytime immediately soon. It seemed like we were going to get at least like at least 10, 15 chapters in between their next encounter. That may be a lot because events happen quickly here. Entire, entire big fights happen. Like the whole Orochi Saitama situation happened in about two chapters. And that seemed like it was going to be more of a more of an encomp encompassing situation within the arc. But it wasn't. So let's see. Let's see what happens with that. I just saw with Atomic Samurai. Um, Atomic was able to cut uh, Black Sperm's, uh, uh, like basically just cut his body up. With the atomic slash right before he came with that punch and Tatsumaki protected him. So it seems like out of all the heroes, he was putting up the biggest fight. Maybe maybe Pig God could have been said to be doing the same amount, if not more. Um Dark Chat is arguable because he was about to get busted in the head. Um so yeah, the Atomic definitely had the coolest like departure. Um dialogue and everything there too. Ex exchange with Black Sperm. Black Sperm looking badass dog. That panel where he was coming with that punch like there, bro. He looks so D-Roll. Black Sperm looking badass there. But that's going to be one of the more exciting fights to see the result of coming back to it. Um, I think probably probably do a poll question with that too. Like, which of the um, which of the secondary uh, hero fights are most exciting? Or will be the most exciting? But Hopefully we're gonna see more of that fight. It's super duper badass. Super duper badass. Atomic Sandra with the fucking stomach slash handling that shit. Um, so let's see. Let's see what else comes up with the other heroes. Fuck Flash and Flash. Um, so we have We got an interesting portion of dialogue with Tatsumaki and Sairochi. Sairochi mentioned that with this output, you must have been holding back before. And we mentioned that whenever she was using so much force. And Tyrochi had flipped her, her shield back on her. She was hurting herself, basically, like suffocating herself, smothering herself with so much power and output. Um, I thought it was incredible. We've never seen Tatsumaki hurt to that extent. But that tells us how much more of a combination, like, that situation was in terms of, like, in terms of, like, how much Tyrochi was really involved in that technique. Like, it was so hard to understand. This is why I'm not necessarily on board completely with this whole Sairochi situation here. The powers, the explanation for the powers, the displays, the designs, it doesn't necessarily fit like traditional One Punch Man to me. Traditional One Punch Man changes and it's it evolves and it's like wide ranging, but this just seems like an entirely different series. Like, uh, I don't know, maybe it's because we haven't really delved into the psychic stuff that much, but even the previous psychic stuff wasn't to this extent. Evil Eye, or, 
yeah, Evil Eye and Fubuki never really gave me this like feel. Neither did um Gear Spur. This is this is something completely different. They're on like, a completely different level as well. But even Tatsumaki's powers don't even be like they don't seem to be matching that. This huge cannon blast that he threw out, that seems Orochi-esque. I think that was actually the black horns. We'll talk about that. We'll speculate that, that, uh, about that on the podcast. But I think those like four beams that we first saw breaking through the top of the building were from the horns. And then they like met up from the top. Maybe it was the tentacles. We don't know. We'll find out. But I don't know, man. I don't. I think it's hard to say that Tazumaki was holding back before. She got hurt pretty badly. She did recover almost immediately. Almost immediately she recovered. But she did almost get knocked out for a second. Maybe incapacitated. But she was struggling for a bit. So, I guess we have to give her the same benefit of the doubt of being a tank and, like, having, like, strong capabilities. Like, all the other rest of the guys, they can take, like, a lot of damage, a lot of punishment. So, she should be able to do that as well. Maybe even more so because she's so strong. But we'll see. Um, with, the, with the base ripped out, one of the craziest feats we've seen so far in the series. Um, it's exposed now. Tatsumaki mentioned that she wanted to flip the association. Before she, when she was talking to Sit, she also mentioned like throwing it all up in the air, and she finally did it. That urge, and determination, she got it done. Somebody else, I'll probably make a video about this, but somebody else who was also speaking about hypotheticals was Metal Knight. He was mentioning that the appropriate strategy that they should have taken was to assault or nuke the Muscle Association base out just all out out front without having to rescue any heroes and putting any individual any individuals at risk now that we see that no individuals on our side actually got killed and were able to somewhat escape not necessarily we're still kind of somewhat in a bind but we may not be depending on like i said the location of the heroes after this removal we could be in a situation where the conditions that metal knight was willing to uh, assist are now optimal the base is out in the open. They don't have to go down there and nuke the entirety of the city or even make a device that's capable of infiltrating the base to nuke. Worry about collateral damage. It's all done now. It's presented here for you. Hit it. But a night during this arc was presented as having an arsenal formidable enough to assault the monster or the Hero Association base on his own. I don't think it's far-fetched to believe that if that Metal Knight could or should arrive. And that Metal Knight could or should assault the Monster Association base effectively. To the point where it, even, it could even compete with Tatsumaki's offensive capabilities to an extent. Maybe on the far end of things. Far, far end of things. If that's the case or not, we'll see a good display from Sairochi. We'll see a good display from uh, Tatsumaki. And Metal Knight will come through. But at the same time, I'm not sure. We'll speculate this a lot, about this a lot more throughout the week and on the podcast. But... Seeing Geno stare just made me straight think of like, okay, there's some allies out here now. We're out in the open and the rest of the city can see, can see this. All the heroes are now in the vicinity of like encountering the biggest obstacle. So either everybody's going to start fighting again or everybody's going to fight this one big problem now. So whatever the case is, there's monsters that still exist that are still alive and still strong. That's far as we know. You know, that's questionable is Homeless Emperor. They should come back. If we do end up teaming up to take down Orochi and we do that, then they'll come back and then we'll have to fight them. So I think the order will be on an escalating or climaxing order. We'll probably fight those uh, those monsters, those cadres, individually first, uh, or finish those fights individually, before we actually get to um, fighting Sairochi together. And by the time we, they finish fighting the cadres, Sairochi may already be defeated by Tatsumaki. And that's the instance that we can expect Goro or some other villain to be the main issue. But I'm expecting some type of team-up situation. Us gathering, coming out here in the open, this is like a locational adjustment. This is for a reason and for a purpose. I'm assuming that we're going to be fighting together somehow. Let's see how that plays out. Um, it should be badass. Like the video, subscribe. Um, we'll see you boys next time. Oh, shit. Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Hold on, hold on, hold on.